Hey guys, my name's James. And I'm Corwin. And welcome to the movie that is this week, but also to the podcast, This This Movie's Gay. Gay. Oh, how did Corwin know I was going to say it right then? I got a fuzz in my mouth. Gross. Yeah, guys. Fuzzes in your mouth are kind of gross because then you have to like pick them out of your mouth. I did. And you just feel awful. So last night. Digging around in your mouth. I was eating a cookie and I don't know if there was a hair inside of the cookie or if there was a, like a hair on my hand and I ate the cookie and then but as you're chomping down on your chompers as one might do you know with your teeth your chompers land before time three and get in those your, uh those star leaves in, in your gums you know like food will or not your gums your molars food will be stuck in there I, like sure, in, in, the, in the little right the craters in your yeah. molars and I I felt like inside that, the food, there was hair, and I was like, Ugh, and I, I hate hair in my mouth, so I started gagging. I got that gag reflex, girls, and <laughs> uh, <laughs> I go into the bathroom, and as I was going in the bathroom, Frank was just leaving, and Frank took a huge dump, so I, in my mind, before I got in there, I was like, okay, James, you're not going to throw up. It'll be fine. You can just quickly wash this out, pick at the teeth, and get it out, but- I see Frank giant shit and it smells so bad. So the combination of like a hair in my mouth and then having to like breathe through my mouth, but then then feeling the hair wiggle around, I threw up. It was disgusting. Gross. Yeah. So then I had to scoop Frank's with the hair still in my mouth, scoop Frank's litter to get the duty out. So that cookie wasn't a treat. It was torturing you it was guys a sweet treat that can't be beat uh yeah beat my insides up that is Uh uh-oh that came out uh (laughs) (laughs) ladies don't do that to the cookies uh no the cookie's doing it to me oh god that's beating my insides up Uh, that cookie's like let me get in them guts boy (laughs) Uh, I i have two things to talk up front uh what okay first Huge update. Huge. I just got on disc two of Final Fantasy VIII. Disc two, and you got the... Oh, sh- 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 I know. Shush. You've been posting it on everywhere. So. Like, so often. Squall is level 21 right now. Uh-huh. The rest of my team's at like level 16. So not even 20 yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, my team is not 20. And I got Lionheart for the first time in my life, guys. I tried and tried to get Blue Dragon somewhere in this little forest that we were told on the internet they were. But we couldn't, like, mug them. We couldn't do anything to get the adamantine that we needed to get that. We had the pulse ammo. We had the other thing you need. And just like, oh, fuck, how can we get this? But I grinded. I went. So you, there's a part where there are missiles coming towards Balam and you're supposed yeah. to run in and tell the Balam people, hey, yeah. a missile's coming. I'm like, there's no time limit right now. I'm going to go over to Zell's mom in Balam town and just grind for Enola cards. I spent like two hours grinding. Got it. Converted the I card modded the, the missiles Enola. came. The missiles went. And hey, everyone's dead. But... I got it, and I'm so jazzed, but the first people I attacked, so I had water junction to my elemental attacking, so what ended up happening is I was like, I'm finally going to beat someone using Lionheart. What my first attack's going to be, I went over to the fish, the like Falconans, whatever they're called, but since I had water junction to my status effect, it just healed them, (laughs) like it gave them life. Uh, so I was a little upset with that, but it couldn't, I'm cheesing over here. I finally got Lionheart. You're so happy about this. Good. And my team, all of my GFs know everything. I literally cannot be damaged. You're just going to cruise through the rest of the game. Yeah, staying at level 20 around there. Maybe I might go up to level 30 because I will need more adamantine later and you can go to the like... Adamatoruses, whatever they're called, the the big old turtles, and they at level thirty drop and can I think be mugged adamantine, so you can just farm it. And I need like three more in order to get other people's best weapons. I'm excited. Such a nerdy update. We sure. love it. 
Uh, what is your other, you said two things. Yes. Okay. So I've been listening to this podcast called Grift Horse and it's two standups. One is Megan Beth Keister and she knows how to like grift. She plays this system. She has never told the story, but in the early to mid 2000s, she frauded Borders books out of around like a hundred thousand dollars just by like return- incredible by just returning things for store credit and getting gift cards and then using the gift cards to purchase things and then flip those on eBay. That's like I think is pretty much the gist, but I don't know how she did it. So I've been very conscious of like how can I take down corporations. Here's I thought one. you were going to say take down Corwin. Oh, <laughs> no, like, no, no, no. What? Uh, so Chewy.com. It's for getting pet supplies and pet food. Well, we have a cat and I went and purchased a bunch of food for him a few months ago. And when you sign up your first order that you set an auto ship for, you get 30% off and you also get free shipping. So you're saving a lot of money. And all I did was once it once it was delivered, I just canceled the auto ship and no repercussions. So I thought, I have a lot of email addresses because of all the podcasts I have. Oh my God. Let me try to see if I make a new account. If even though it's shipping to the same address, I'll still get that 30% off. Guess what? You do. So I'm just going to keep doing this with new email addresses. And it's giving me a 24 case for free practically of Food for Frank. There are a lot of people that do stuff like that with like, uh, free trials for like Hulu and yeah. uh, things like that. I don't know what it has for. Tri- does Disney Plus have a free trial? Disney Plus does have a free trial. It does interesting for like, but it's only like a week. Well, I'm mad at them because they are dropping the Love Simon TV show. Oh, yeah, they said that it wasn't family friendly oh, because boo. of content, so they're moving it to, to Hulu. Hulu. Yeah. And it's like, um, excuse me, you've got Star Wars on there where Anakin murders a bunch of children yeah. and cuts Count Dooku's head off, countless other things. And you've also got the Avengers on there where Thor straight up cuts off Thanos. Big, uh, j- uh, big, blue, spoilers. big, uh, big purple giant's head. Um, yeah. Oh, that's still, everyone knows who the big, per- there's, it's not like a bulk from, uh, Dexter's Laboratories on I'm this show. I'm mixing up like six different names in my head right now, so I literally cannot say his name. Okay. So, yeah. So, those things are like not too hard content for Disney Plus, but a TV show about a gay kid is? Okay. Hey, man, we've talked about the rating system, but that's what creator of Lizzie McGuire is hoping happens (sighs) is it goes to Hulu so they can kind of explore more things. Yeah. Instead of it just being like, we're going to reboot this family show and it'll be like Girl Meets World. I thought that was canceled. Oh, Girl Meets World. No, no, no. I thought the Lizzie McGuire remake was canceled. No, that's still going. still going? Yeah. Okay. Oh, man, it's going to be so good. So- the other grift I have, this one's a real grift. Uh, oh my god! I have a mouse. It was. It's a Staples You're brand about mouse. A keyboard. Yes, mouse. a key, yes, a keyboard mouse. Uh, a computer mouse, not a mouse mouse. And it kept bogging in and out. And I like this mouse because it's it's easy to edit. The one that came with a computer is so gigantic that it makes my pinky hurt. And I was like, well, I don't have the receipt. I don't know if I can return this. So what I did last night, I got the model number for this uh, Staples thing. They still sell them. I went to the store, bought a new one, came back home, undid it, put the shitty one into the packaging, and then packaged it back up, went there and said, this one doesn't work, which is not a lie. And I got my money back. Great. I felt so alive. (laughs) I saved $15 doing that. Oh, my God, James. And I saved like $40 with the cat food. Saving that money. If Nicole, because Nicole will have to buy cat food next, if Nicole doesn't do that trick, I'm going to be like, you're throwing money away right now. (laughs) You're just throwing it away. Oh, man. Oh, man. But guys, if you need cheap pet food and you want to buy in bulk, go to Chewy.com. Constantly signing up for new stuff. Just do an auto ship order. Then once it gets shipped to you, cancel that auto ship. 
It just sounds like a lot of work. It's but not. I though. understand. I saved I understand. like forty bucks. I'm very proud of you. I need to. St- and now I'm just like, what? What? What else can I do to? To you need to be an extreme couponer, James. You need to. I've been get thinking into about that. that too. Yeah. I need to come in here and see sixty uh, things of detergent, and you'll be like, Corwin, here's your detergent, and I'll be like, oh, what? And you'll be like. I made 20 bucks on this. Yeah. You, you get free detergent. I need to, I think in the summertime, I need to just say fuck it and take the trek to like Aldi or something and start Aldi's buying there. Great. I love going there. Because I can't go to family or Dollar Tree anymore because everything at Dollar Tree gives me uh, digestion issues, if you know what yes, I'm saying. Yes, because it's from Dollar Tree. Yeah. You're paying for quality. It's It's not... It it upsets me because I had the mac and cheese there every single day last year, pretty much. That probably has very seriously (laughs) fucked you up. Well, once I got ulcers back, I couldn't eat that stuff. And then I switched over to a tofu egg diet. And then I was like, oh, I'll start eating this mac and cheese again to, to be money conscious. And now my roommate does the same thing and he always has digestive issues and stuff like that. And I'm like, it's because you're eating very poor quality food. Like, I understand that you're buying poor quality food because you're trying to save money and because it's cheap. But that's also putting a lot of shit in your body that is not good for you. Yeah, guys. Hey, we're millennials. We're trying to cut corners so we might eat poor quality food, but we're eating high quality ass. Am I right? <laughs> Nicole has said that uh, one of the podcasts I listen to, Doughboys, they always joke that millennials love to eat ass. And then yeah, everyone does. I, and Nicole uh, is like, that's the only stereotype of millennials that I, one, enjoy hearing and two, can say like, yeah, that I agree with this. I mean, the other stereotype I enjoy is that we eat too much avocado toast. Oh, I can't do that. Um, and also that we kill entire industries. Yeah. That I love having the power to take down corporations as a millennial. I'm it's just be great. Killing staples because once this kill mouse staples. once this mouse Murder shits staples. out again, I'm doing the same thing over again. <laughs> I, are you saying that the mouse is going to shit out in like two days? I think w- probably within a year how how hardcore I am with it. Why are you doing that to your mouse? No, I edit a lot. I play video games on my computers and my mouse is fine. It's a $10 mouse. Okay. I have no idea how much my mouse costs because I haven't really bought a mouse in forever. I just keep getting them as gifts or oh, like dang. part of things. Oh, wow. Mr. Fancy over I here have has like three friends. three of them. I mean, I can see if I can find one to bring to you. Oh, well, no, I like this mouse. Okay. So uh, I need to figure out a grift I can do to... I think if I go through Amazon again to try and get these lights replaced, because the, we've had these for not even two years, these uh, LEDs. tube lights. Yeah, and they are they used to be so bright, like too bright, and now they're they're freaking nothing. Maybe dust them? No, no. Like, it's the inside <laughs> of the light. Uh, I don't know, James. I don't well, know. I'll figure it out. I'll, I'm going to message the store and be like, D- I saw some of these had two-year warranties. Can I still do this? Do you have the receipt? It's out from Amazon. So, so yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either, guys. You let try us, it. Check it out. Let us know. All right, 15 minutes in, our movie this week yeah. that we watched was Freak Show. We are all stars now at the Freak Show. Marilyn Manson, baby. Okay. So this movie is from 2017. It is. And it's got Bette Midler in it. Barely. She was a one-day shoot. She was a one-day shoot, and she was like, I'm going to be drunk the whole time. Man. As a character. I hated her in this mo- Like, that character. Mom. Oh, gross. Just, ew. The main character calls his mom Muv, and it is disgusting. <laughs> don't don't call, just that, call. Her, she said her name is Mavin, but then there, later she he calls her mom, and she says, don't call me that. Yeah, and like very seriously says, don't call me that. And it was real harsh. And you're like, ooh. And then we find out why. Ooh. She didn't want a kid. And she was just using the kid for money. Yeah. You know, uh, sometimes parents is going to do you wrong. Sometimes people who have children suck. 
Absolutely. If I would have had a kid, I'd probably suck too. Well, don't do that. I can't. Remember? I know. Yeah. I, I, man, I, mean, I don't regret suck. it. I regret sometimes. The only thing I regret is I can't grift the system to donate semen. How would that be grifting the system? I just that give would them... just be donating semen. I, I mean, or like, that wouldn't even be donating semen. That'd be selling semen. I, I'd be grifting se- my role in society or like society's norm of uh, you get a job. No, and that's not. I gotta start that's donating not how blood, that works. plasma to get a little money. And if you know any places to do this, surveys, focus groups, you get paid for that stuff. Or just uh, people, if you're in Chicago and you need a place to record a podcast, please contact me. I'm $13 an hour. If you're upset with that amount of money, it's minimum wage. There was someone who uh, who contacted me. I will not tell the musician's name, but we, we're like friendly. And he said, hey, you mixed my previous CD. Would you like to mix this new one? It's a seven track EP, which I was like, thank God it's only seven songs because previously he had like a 20 song album that he wanted to me to mix. And he's like, I want it done before this. I'm like, great, we can do that as long as you just keep sending me tracks as they're done. He did not do that and made me mix like 14 songs in a week. As I was Maybe work- he did them all at the same time. I don't know. But as I was working a 40-hour job as well at Burger King, so I had that like still in the back of my mind and I was only charging him like $10 a song. Dang. I, because like we were like friendly with the like I came up as the same time he was coming up and mm-hmm. my like we're my space friends. My space. Yeah. So I like he's like, how much would you want for each song? And I was like, thirty dollars a song. That's not that much, especially like if you think each song's going to take about two and a half hours. That's around thirteen dollars an hour. Yeah. And that's if dubs are lined up properly. If if I have to go in and like move a bunch of shit, it takes longer. So he's like, you know, could we do like a bundle for this? I don't want to like cheap you out, but, uh, you know, like we have a pass in this and that. And I was like, fuck, man. And I was like, yeah, I could do 25 a song after I had, I had said like maybe for like some of the shorter songs, shorter songs, meaning if it's just a verse that you're spitting and there's no chorus and all of that, that's a short song. I'll do like 20 to 25. And he's like, well, you know, like sometimes for beats, I do bundles and this and that. And I was like, fine, I'll do 25. And then you then he said this. I want it out before St. Patrick's Day. And I was like, well, man, I unfortunately cannot do this for the price you are asking me to do. Here is someone else you might be able to contact. And it sucks because bundling stuff as an artist, if it's something you have to custom do, like you, it's not like I made a bunch of beats and I'm leasing them out to people, like just putting it on a website and saying like, purchase it for $10 and I send you the beat, but other people can also buy that beat for $10. That's when a bundle thing would be, make sense as an artist. But if you're, especially a friend, if you're saying like, can you bundle these? Uh, Just because I'm doing more doesn't mean it's going to take less time to do. So I just very nicely said, hey, man, I can't do it. He's never going to listen to this, so I don't need to worry. (laughs) But if anyone is listening and you have an artist friend who is trying to do it as a living, don't don't do that shit. If they say, hey, man, here is the price I am giving you. Guess what? We are telling you the friendship price. Yeah, because a a normal person, I probably would have said forty dollars a song. You should have said fifty. I mean, I don't think I'm that good. That's a lot of time. I mean, I'm calculating out 30 for like two and a half to three hours. Yeah, that's... Still a lot of time, James. But trying to get me to, especially when all the songs haven't been recorded, to do them in like three weeks, get them done. Yeah. I'm saying, fuck no, man. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, pay, how do we get on here? Pay your rates. Pay your rates to your artist friends when you're asking them to do things. Unless they absolutely refuse to take money from you. And then that's fine. Yeah. But, you know, but still like, food or something. Yes, figure out a way to give them monetary value. Yeah. This movie. Okay, Freak Show. It came out the year before Love, Simon. It had a very, like, that sort of feel to it, I yeah. feel like. Ex- except not. I don't know. Um, I I love the soundtrack in this. It's great. There yeah. are some songs that I was like, I love this song. I listen to it daily. Can I tell uh, you the difference between Love, Simon and this movie and why you might be like, eh? E- yes, because I probably already have it written down too. Main character isn't that likable. 
<laughs> just insanely high maintenance. And I, I, in the end, I understood it of he's kind of been brainwashed by this mom intentionally or not intentionally. But, but yeah, saying like the dad's bad and mom's good, which happens in divorce, two parent homes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I did not like him up until the end. There was one thing that he said, talking to Flip, of saying, Flip is realizing that, hey, I'm doing this. Flip's a football player. He's like, I do all of this stuff for my family. And then Billy, our main character, says, it sounds like you like football as much as I like eating with my hands. And I said, yes, Billy. Thank you. I'm vindicated on this podcast. Oh, my God. That was the one moment that you were like, okay, I like him. Uh, I mean, his uh, star meter got a little bit up, but it's he's not a friggin' Hugh Jackman. Okay. I mean, the character himself, I I didn't think that he was unlikable. He was difficult to like. Eh. I don't like high-maintenance people. That might be why. He, you're saying high-maintenance, like, people need to do a lot to be around him but people don't need to do anything they just need to accept him as who he is i guess extra is that the the word i would be looking very for? very dramatic people yes he's a theater kid who is not in theater and i already don't like the the personification of a theater kid no thank you please tone it down man and then if you're not even in theater you're being the bully that all of them were James. no i'm not i'm just saying like you're dude, like tone it down man you're saying exactly what flip told him no 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 no. he can dress as he wants to but it's just like uh, he's not forcing you to do anything uh, no he is like you he's don't high have, maintenance you, it's he not is. high maintenance because you're not he, you're not doing anything that you need to maintain any sort of relationship with him. He's not requiring you to do anything. He's uh, no, just, okay. the only thing that he's requiring of you is to accept him for who he is. That's not high maintenance as a person. Uh, no, but I'm saying like he himself is high maintenance. If it takes you four hours to get ready, that's high maintenance. Yeah, but he's not, he's not. So whenever someone's like, oh, they're high maintenance, usually it's, you're like, Oh, I have to do a lot to accommodate them. You're he's not requiring anyone to do anything to accommodate him. He's like, I'm doing this myself because I want to. See, but I think of like if I were in a relationship with him and I'm like You're not in a relationship. But or even a friendship and with him. Even if him. you weren't in a relationship, his friendship with Trip, Trip didn't need to do anything. Trip literally showed up at his house and he's like, "All right, we're going to just hang out and have fun." I would have loved to see it because no, that's not realistic. It's just like when, you know, like Community talked about this in a movie when they like flip on the radio and then all of a sudden it's the news report exactly where you where it needs to be telling you, oh, the the criminal just escaped from the prison and he has a hatchet and he's in your area. I don't know where you're going with this. There was never a scene where Flip comes over and is like. Billy, and then Billy's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I still need two hours to get ready. Uh, Go do whatever you want to do. Come back in two hours. Billy literally talks about Flip is like, oh, I have been hanging out with you every day this week or something like that. And he's like, well, mostly you've been hanging out with my father. Still, it's unrealistic. I wanted to see. A lot of it is him probably Flip showing up and our main character Billy not being ready and him going and hanging out with the dad instead. That's why Flip knows the dad so well. Okay, okay. All right. Still. But this movie isn't about Flip and it's not about the dad, so we're not going to see those scenes. Still, like there was just something that rubbed me the wrong. Just, I think I'm putting myself into his body and I'd be like, that's exhausting. I don't want to do that for four hours. Yeah, stop putting yourself in his body. That's what movies is, baby. You put yourself into the, how would you feel in this setting? In this setting, it's more of how would you respond to this person in real life? Oh, yeah, then I guess I'd be fine with it. Yeah, so... But if I'm trying to be him, it's exhausting. You're not trying to be him, and that wasn't the point of the movie. That's not the point of movies? That's not the point of movies, James. I watched Sonic, and I said, man, good thing he has a nice heartbeat, because if I'm in his place, I guess I would go fast. If anything, I would have been faster more than him. So my difference in this and Love, Simon is that Love, Simon had you know, that love story. So that's what it was. This was not a love story. There there wasn't that aspect. This was more of a character who knew himself to an extent and is 
learning how to stand up and be himself in adversity. And he just straight up goes out and does that. But there's no real lesson learned or anything like that. Like with Love, Simon, you have the person who outs Simon is someone that you're like, oh, I fucking hate that person. But then in this movie, you've got Lynette, who is like super homophobic and running for homecoming queen against him. And ultimately, they're like, okay, she wins. Yeah. Even though in the moments before you had the whole school rooting for him. And then you have the little she- scene after the little moment after with the Lynette's friend who was also terrible being like, I, she had my vote, but you, you have my heart. And it's like, okay, great. So you're telling me that you, that what you're saying is that you love me as a queer person, but mm, you, you don't think I should exist in, in any sort of spotlight. You don't think that I should, I should be there in public. You think I should be swept under the rug is sort of what that scene felt to me. Yeah. Also because she said it to him off in a corner, like on the yeah. side of a wall instead of like exclaiming it yeah. to the world. So it's like, <laughs> it's like, okay, you can, uh, you, yes, well, yes, we will, uh, we will love you, but ultimately we're still going to vote for the homophobic person. Ultimately we're still going to hold them to a pedestal and you get to stay in the corner. Which also, some of this movie didn't make sense because the school has a zero tolerance policy. It and had a zero tolerance policy after he got beat yeah, up. But and that almost speech murdered. should have disqualified her. Yeah. Under that zero tolerance there policy. Are a lot that should have. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the moments you're like, what? Especially because, so we find out that this town has a tour. And this tour bus goes by the mansion that he lives in and is like, this is the mansion of the Blooms. They're one of the founding families of this town. And they're obviously rich. I don't know. They're at some academy. So I don't know if all the other students are also rich. They might be wealthy. But there is another level of wealthy from the people who founded the town and who have a name in the town. So it's kind of ridiculous that that school has someone there a child of like a founding family of their town and they are allowing the other children to bully them. Oh yeah. Like you're going to get sued. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. You're, you're literally going to lose your funding or whatever, because this is someone who is important and you're letting them be treated like that. And on one hand, I'm like, yes, bye bye. But on the other hand, I'm like, you know, he's being treated poorly because he's queer and none of these teachers are standing up for him, even though he has that privilege, which is wild. Yeah, especially after he he gets beaten to almost death. The fact yeah, he was in a coma for five days. That's ridiculous. The fact that one, those boys just got expelled, expelled, <laughs> uh, expulsion is what Let's i was get those expelled uh and not arrested and then su- like on top of that sued it, it just made it seem like the dad was so absent that he wasn't doing anything or maybe he maybe he just didn't want to be in the spotlight for this thing because at the time he was still like not angry about how his son is but also didn't want to make it like a show that hey my son is queer Maybe that's it. I don't know. That still doesn't explain like the teachers. The, yes. It doesn't it doesn't matter in that. Well, first of all, you're supposed to be you're you're not you shouldn't be a teacher if you're going to have a child in your class and treat them like that or have other people treat them like that in a learning environment. That's not a good environment to learn in. Especially when you consider that he's part of the fucking founding family for the town and rich. Yeah. Why would you if you were a kid in that school, you'd be like, that kid will absolutely ruin my life one day oh, if uh, I yeah. do if I treat them shitty. And it's insane because even in like public schools, if there is a wealthy parent, the teachers will be like, Oh, we need to make sure that kid is okay because their dad just bought all new computers. Their mom just made a new wing. <laughs> their <laughs> their name is on half the shit in the school. But th- maybe the dad didn't do any of that i I because it's never brought up but it maybe they just didn't want that wrinkle in there because it would have 
made it very it, easy for him to it would have been like a point of oh well this obviously wouldn't happen to this kid because of his privilege yeah so they just didn't inc- include it but we still saw him in a giant ass mansion which also when flip stayed over and was drunk why did flip sleep on the couch i have no <laughs> idea in a mansion there's so many rooms he stayed on a couch i'm s- i was I wrote that down. I was so upset by that. I was also upset by him saying, my name is Mark. I was like, Mark? Did not expect that. I didn't even notice because when you're a kid or a teen and you have a friend stay over and they're just like, maybe because he was like super drunk and he was like, well, I can't bring him up here in fear of one, waking someone in fear of two, like I physically can't or three, he's going to break shit. There are probably rooms for that. You put your friend on the couch. So I didn't even think like, oh, why isn't he in a guest room? If you have a house that has guest rooms, you put the friend in the guest room. He's not an athletic boy. Trying to carry around an athletic boy? Trip could obviously walk himself. They were down some steps outside. I think he helped carry him. I'm fine with his decision to be like, you're living that couch life, baby. I am so mad about that. I'm like, why would you leave him? Why would you? He brought him blankets and everything. Why would you be on that couch? I was barely allowed to. There's a bed. In my house, I was barely allowed to have friends over uh, because. Well, obviously, Trip is er, flip. I keep calling him Trip. I thought his name was Trip. Obviously, Flip is different because he has a great relationship with Billy's father. I mean, sort of relationship with their housekeeper. um, Who's like, that's the smartest thing I've ever heard you say the whole time you've been here, son. My stepmom and my dad keep a very, very tidy house to the point where Nicole... My friend Tyler Cord, I think other Tyler, maybe I don't think other Tyler has ever been there. A lot of my friends are afraid to go over to my house in fear of just moving something while sitting down. They're like, I don't know where I'm supposed to sit. Is this couch a fancy couch where you don't sit? Or is this couch okay to sit down on? And I'm like, as long as you move the pillows off to this side and put them here, it's fine. But yeah, if my parents weren't home, my friends weren't allowed to come over, which just changed like in my last two years yeah, there. But obviously, that's not the same case with Billy. He just had people over. It's fine. I'm just saying maybe other areas of the house, he would think, oh, you're, I'm going to break something if he's here. Do you think Billy's personality was like, oh, oh yeah. I'm no, <laughs> his personality was not that at all. He's like, mm, daddy will get over it. That was part of the personality that i'm like mm, um i'd love to ri- live that rich kid life just to yeah, inherit be, it all and then be incredible give it all away incredible yeah so that the i guess overall oh. the reason jesus i threw my phone on my foot that hurt Hi. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my toe has been crushed yeah the reason i didn't like this as much as love simon is because love simon has like sort of a message of hope at the end and this did not that did not come through at all it just sort of ended with oh the homophobe still wins the the shitty person still wins yeah no one likes her but she still won which i guess is honest because that's what happens in life but yeah that's why it sort of felt different than love simon i i took the ending as more of somewhat hopeful in the sense that you can make the dent to make the change but there's still more to be done. I I guess. But it's like, okay, now the kids aren't torturing him actively. So that's great. He would never be homecoming queen. But at least they're not brutally beating him to death. Hey, that's that's <laughs> always a plus. Yeah. It's great. It's t- like, yeah, that scene was brutal. Well, and also like even the speeches at the end, whenever Lynette was being homophobic and awful, not everyone was cheering or anything. There was like two people in the crowd that were like, yep, uh-huh, yeah. It sounded like a little more than two, but the response that he got was even bigger. Yeah. It's and insane. That's what gets me is like, oh, we like you a lot more, but we're not going to vote for you. We're not going to support you as a person. That's, that's what that felt like. 
But it is very, yes, as you said, honest to life. Like if someone were gay running for any, uh, let's just say president, and I'm not bringing up a specific candidate right now, even though it is in line, but that candidate might not be the best candidate. Even if you were a perfect candidate, you would be the best president. I honestly believe America would not elect a gay president, unfortunately, because America still sucks. <laughs> America still sucks, y'all. Oh, haha, flip. That was a great moment. Uh, I'm just trying to see what notes I've got. Well, on that, the beating scene. So, like, uh, masked men trick him into going into a not, not occupied where this class is. classroom and beat him up. But w- do you know what a pastel goth is? Yeah. It's like a goth person for our listeners. It's it's a goth person. But instead of all black, they're in pastel, like vibrant colors. He had kind of a pastel black metal going on. He was in a wedding dress. Yeah. And uh, but he had like a black swan moment going on. He had face paint on that was very much Norwegian black metal, but it was colorful. And I, I thought that was best outfit that he wore. I love that he wore a fencing outfit and people still threw things at him, even though he was carrying an epe. I'm like, why would he was? He's holding a sword. Why are you throwing things at him? Oh, man, that's I would have stabbed everyone. This is the difference. Also, uh, he should have been escorted out wearing that now that I know he had the sword as well. Yeah, he was holding it. He was holding it down like you walk with it. And people were still throwing things at him. Made no sense to me. Someone slapped a pat on his. That wasn't his that wasn't the the I know. outfit. That was a, uh, a Daft, Daft Punk. Yeah, Daft Punk outfit. Lots of different outfits from different movies. That actor is in. So he's in a TV show on Netflix that's pretty good. I actually really enjoy that actor. He is also in a different movie that is gay. Um, that we may watch later, but uh, one of the highlights of that movie is that he uses a carrot. Oh, t- for sexual pleasures? Yeah. Just like in another gay movie. Yeah, sure. You remember when... Uh... Yeah, the beginning in yeah. the bed. Yeah, there's there's that. That happens. Um, but I think that movie is all in French or Marie. mostly in French. I don't know. Um, Don Petty. So that actor's pretty cool. The lady that was the house, uh, house cleaner, no house, I don't know. House mistress. She took care of the house uh, and made him food and all that stuff and was like a surrogate mom to him, sort of. She is in a lot of random stuff too. I always just recognize her because she always has like a scarf on. Um, like She, she gets cold on set. <laughs> every single time. So there's some... Pretty fun people. The one, the girl that brought him to the corner afterwards, uh, after Lynette won, um, and was like, "Don't be a bitch" to the other girl. She is in Scream, the TV show. Ah, yeah. Uh, so there's there's some some fun people in this. Flip saved him and then became his friend, and that was pretty cool. Um, but he did sort of get. He had, a, he had, you knew it was going to happen. You're like, oh, anytime there's this jock kid hanging out with the gay kid, there's always going to be that moment where everyone's like, oh, are you gay too? And then he's going to have a blow up moment where he's like, don't touch me and say a slur or something. And it happened. That's what happened. Great trope. Let's just keep doing that. I'm not serious. Let's stop that trope. Cheer! I'm tired of it. Did you have any, like, significant notes? Yeah, I really liked Flip's art work. It looked a lot like Final Fantasy concept art. Yeah, yeah, he was a great artist. And if he, he just needs a little bit more to tone those skills. But Flip said he was super into comic books, and his father finding out that he was going to a comic book shop instead of football practice, let's just say, he burnt all of his comic books. And it would have been a great plot thing, you know, something to happen in this movie, is that... Billy's very, very good at costume design. They go to like a comic con to say like, hey, man, let's do cosplay. And he was dressed up as Spider-Man or something. That would have been cool. Yeah. I mean, it's based off a book. I haven't read the book. I also the shadow people was a great moment because I always look at the people in the background of movies and stuff. And this movie specifically was like, oh, the shadow people. And then it flips through the scenes and you see all these actors that I've been like noticing like, oh, that that person's cool. 
And then later, when he's trying to get someone to vote for him or to show support for him, he's bringing up that this guy was in a boy band when he was younger. And the guy is like, no, never tell anyone, blah, 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 I'll beat you up, all of that stuff. And in the background, I was like, that girl is just holding the phone. And then like two seconds later, he goes, yeah, our uh, our future filmmaker is right there uh, and got it all. And it showed her. So I that little thing, utilizing the background actors and stuff was was great. I enjoyed that. And then Laverne Cox was also in this movie and she was incredible. Lynette saying, he wants attention like all gays do, don't you know? And Laverne Cox going, I do not. And being not pleased with Lynette because no one likes her. And she's from Zombieland. Lynette is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I had like a lot of stuff. The very first interaction with him and Lynette was great because they were being shitty and they were like, oh, well, do you want to be like super gay? Um sorry i mean do you like being at the school and like just really shitty and he's like all right you 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 want fashion advice and stuff okay and then just completely destroys them it's great uh i i was like what movie have i seen her sophia rob it's something like that sophia rob lynette i was like what have i seen her in recently what the fuck So Nicole and I like this movie called Final Girls, or it's like The Final Girl. It's one of the two. It has Thomas Middleditch and Chloe Mortez Grace. uh, How? uh, Yeah. Yes. Got you. And it's super good. It's super meta of they get sucked into a slasher movie and they have to survive in that movie. So Nicole is at the exchange and it's like, oh, fuck yeah. I see that. I'm going to have them grab it. She gets home and then she sits down and she's like, oh, look at what I got. And then it's like, oh, no. And bought a movie called Final Girl with Sophia Rob in Uh it. And it's not the same movie. And she's like, well, let's just fucking watch it. It looks good. And it is by this provocateur. He likes calling himself a provocateur. The director who is someone who is just like a photographer. He did the Kathy Griffin Trump head photo Uh uh-huh so he's this provocateur he also has like a documentary about like it's his name colon provocateur very pretentious and the movie is just so bad the cinematography is fantastic but everything else is so bad (laughs) guys watch it it's it's batshit and he has other movies that you you can't even find trailers for it, he's that underground, but is somehow pulling in these big name actresses and actors. It's it's bat shit. All right. Well, do you have any other notes? Uh, that drunk mom brought back flashbacks. Yikes! Because uh, I it's something that I edited out of a previous episode of this show where a ex girlfriend's mom who was very drunk was hitting yeah. on me <laughs> in that same <laughs> style. <laughs> And I go into detail on it, and I was like, Corwin, I actually think I should edit that out because I felt very uncomfortable editing it. And yes, that happened to me, but a little bit worse, where the ex-girlfriend was absolutely horrified and pissed off at her mom for day drinking and then hitting on an underaged boy. Yikes. It was very so uncomfortable, like touching my thigh. And I was like, Yikes. oh, no, don't touch me. Please stop this. I don't like anybody touching me. Oh, but you better um, believe oh, me and that mom fucked later. I'm kidding. No, that did not happen. Gross. It, it was it still uh, makes me uncomfortable and is bad. All right. Um, on that note, would you recommend the movie? Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, I would, too. It's a it's a good movie. I would say watch Love, Simon. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty good. And yeah, I don't have any other notes. Disney Plus is needs... T- I mean, they have all these assets, so Disney can just throw things on Hulu because they have majority ownership of it now. But Disney, if you're listening, you're not. Anyone wor- who works for Disney Plus, just allow mature things to be on there because you already, have, already mature have mature things, things. on. They're just saying that gay people are mature, but like, how is being gay a mature content? Like, what's a 
Give, it's not wrong. Give me a Disney movie, like a live action Disney movie. Just I anything. I don't. Luck of the Irish. Luck of the Irish? Um, last time I checked. Do uh, not. Shut up. Shut up. No. He, he He's trying to smooch a lady in that movie. Yeah. And same thing. Just because a man's trying to smooch another man, it doesn't make it wrong if you allow yourself to show teens smooching teens. It shouldn't matter. It's it should be as mature as another teen smooching another teen Disney. Yeah, people just up ratings whenever you have gay content, even or queer content at all, even though there's nothing bad happening and there's nothing mature happening at all. It's literally probably a lot less uh, like smooching and stuff like that than other movies that are rated lower. And uh, I just hate it. It's also, so annoying. in teen romps. Please, Hollywood, normalize hand stuff instead of someone what the just hell are you talking? instead of just jumping straight to sex for like these teens are like, oh, I have to lose my virginity. I would just rather give not, hand jobs. I would rather not normalize underage intercourse. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Don't have underage intercourse because when you normalize it in movies, teens are like, you want to know what? Yeah, we can. It's fine in movies. They don't get pregnant as as teenagers. Just say like, hey, we as Hollywood can make a change. And that change is hand jobs is fine, guys. You're still going to orgasm. I will die on this soapbox. I did not like that. <laughs> um, that was me as a teen. I was like, I'm afraid to have a child as a teenager. I'm afraid to have a child as an adult. I'm fine with hand stuff, guys. It's, it's, a, it's still love and expression of the body. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, okay. I felt like we had we talked a lot about the movie and analyzed it that I had to go on a soapbox a little bit. Okay. I did also teach people how to grift. I mean, just be safe, y'all. Be safe. And what's safer um, than just a hand slapping on <laughs> genitals? That's how you do you hand You still need stuff. to be safe, even, even there. Yeah, guys, wash up afterwards. And if you ejaculate on your hands, make sure you wash it before you start going in someone's insides because semen kit might carry that way. I don't know. I'm not a scientist. You are not. J oh, my God. And that's something I was always afraid oh of. Oh, my God. Okay. I would be um, in the bathroom washing my genitals okay, well, afterwards. Okay. All right. Moving on. And I put a vacuum on there to just suck Jesus out. I'm Christ. kidding. That's not. No, I just go pee pee. <laughs> oh my god also if you're having sex go pee afterwards that's how you can make sure you don't get a uti okay that's real all right thanks for listening this week to that stuff if you um also if you enjoyed that movie that james and i enjoyed uh a couple weeks ago analysis paralysis the uh creator of that is making a new movie and has a kickstarter we've shared it on our social medias so if you are interested in donating to that do it uh, or share their stuff uh, their kickstarter uh, we have shared it as well uh, we'll probably share it again when this comes out I'll put a uh, link in the description yeah also uh, my social media at core winning uh, Instagram and Twitter and all that uh, this podcast at this movie's gay both Instagram and Twitter and all of that and uh, my theater company at Sawbox Theater Collective. Follow them. See what they're doing. Help them do things. Amazing. Those are my plugs. Hey, guys. Go over to MLMPod.com to find out more information about my other podcasts, such as What the Hell Mouth, Hit It and Crit It, and Mostly Speaking Sentai, which this episode this week of Mostly Speaking Sentai will be our first live podcast. We're live from C2E2. Also, if you be, would be so kind to donate, go to mlmpod.com forward slash donate. We'll give you a shout out. But, uh-oh, starting soon, fingers crossed, within the next couple months, finally, we have episodes banked for exclusive Patreon stuff. We'll give you more information when that goes live. But it'll be like 4 to $5 a month to get four extra podcasts every month. Whoa, that's insane. And that'll be the best way to so, to support this. And if it gets high enough, guess what? Corwin's going to get paid, too. Amazing. And he was looking for that. He was wanting to have me respond. Go to YouTube and search 
mostly speaking Sentai, where uh, Nicole and I and myself and guests such as Corwin were live streaming video game playing as well as just doing Let's Plays. As well as. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Currently, we are doing The Sims, Nicole and I. I'm losing my mind of being absolutely stressed out playing The Sims. Don't know where I should be going. Don't know what I should be doing. And then Rudy and I will be playing Devil May Cry 5 soon. James and I started playing a game where I stole all the health potions. He sure did. I gotta find a cheat code to give me health potions. Gotta get those health potions. And I think that's it. Listen to my music. You can download it all for free on MLMPod.com under Marshland Monster. Gonna have a CD out soon on Spotify. Just need one more song, baby. One more song. And then the album is done. Also, I need to get permission from uh, the people that I sampled their voices. Yeah. Or, it, hey, ask permission later. Ask for forgiveness now. Right? It's something like that. I've been James, I think. I've been Corwin. And see you in class, bitch, bitch sticks. Hey. Bye. Bye. Corwin's got to make dinner for friends. Yeah. Oh, my God. Corwin making dinner with friends. I guess I'm not a friend. Four I'm... friends that just had a baby. Oh, my God. Well, I guess I shouldn't have gotten a vasectomy. Maybe then finally Corwin would make me dinner. I've offered. You keep saying no thanks. I'm not saying no thanks. Uh-huh. I'm just saying uh, we got to make time for it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. This has been a Marshland Media production, produced by James McCullum. For more content, please visit mlmpod.com. To support our network and have access to exclusive podcasts, head over to patreon.com forward slash mlmpod and sign up today.